everyone, welcome back. Now this app comes with a nice little practice image if you just want to start playing, but we're going to go ahead and use one of our own photos. So I'm going to click the camera button in the upper left and I'm going to choose choose picture. I'm not going to use the camera to take a photo. I already have my pictures and I'm going to choose this flower image. And again, if you would like to follow along, you're more than welcome to. You do not have to use this image. Along the bottom, before we click, click the uh, checkbox there to bring it in, you have the option to rotate, crop it to a certain aspect ratio, but I'm just going to click the checkbox. Okay, on the top row here, we have what are considered gels. So a lot of these will just kind of change the overall color tones of your photo. All right, so let's just try a few of these and see what they look like. And a lot of them are going to, like I said, change the overall color. See, that one I definitely don't like. It's just very matte looking. Sweet Gum's got a little bit of texture in it, along with the colors. And you can see when I click on these that each one is currently saying multiply. And you might come in here and see a few that say overlay. And that's probably because I have been in there and I've changed them before. So if I do want to change those blending modes on any of these, let's see what Sherbert looks like. So I'm going to click on it again and I get a few choices, not a ton, but a few. So if I wanted to change it to overlay, that's very pretty. Actually, that has a nice brightening effect. Hard light is a little bit too much color. Soft light is kind of nice. Let's go back to multiply. Okay, when you get to the very end of the row, you have a button that says switch pack. So I can switch my gel packs from the original overlays that were included in this app and others that I have either purchased the complete collection with or I have added on one by one. So I have a bunch of bokeh. Let's check what the lights are. When I click on that other one, see this one doesn't have as many in it but it's got some interesting looks. So again, scrolling through, thinking about what it is that I want to convey about this image, and those are not the things that I want to convey. So I'm gonna click on Switch Pack, and the Heavens has a whole bunch of sky, and you don't have to actually click on it to see what it has. If you wanna take a peek, click that little eye, and it will show you on a single image the different gels that are available within that pack. So you don't actually have to apply it. So right now I'm going to go back to none and I'm going to go to the bottom row and I'm going to start clicking on these textures instead. Now those are the original textures. Again, if I go all the way to the end and click on switch pack, those are the original textures that came with Distressed FX. So vintage painterly grunge. Again, I don't want a grunge look, so I'm not going to go for that here. I'm going to choose box of colors. Let's see that one. Because I really just want to change the overall color look of this, add a little splash of color without too much texture. That's very watercolor looking. Let's see if we change it to soft light or something. Nah, not liking that. Okay, so I'm going to look at rose and wine because I actually like those pink tones. And so when I click on that, if I switch it to overlay, look at how that added just a touch of color, a smidge of texture, but it really just brightened that whole image up. I really like that. That is the type of look I'm going for. So I'm going to leave that on overlay and I'm going to close that out. Just a quick note, the button on the left that is kind of an eyedropper is a blurring button. If I pinch and extend my fingers out like this, I can widen that up a little bit, but that's not something that I really use very much, if ever. The eraser is going to allow us to remove part of this texture from the image, and I'm actually gonna do that with another photo. The birds are going to do exactly that. They're going to add birds to our photo, which is completely inappropriate on this one. So I'm not going to do that either. So let's look at over the sliders over here. And here is on the bottom, the saturation. So if I really like the color, but I thought maybe a little bit more of it than that, but I don't. And this is the overall brightness. But again, I like the brightening that it did. So I'm going to leave it there. 
The top one is sharpening. Um, I kind of like the very soft look here, so I don't want to do too much with that. And on the right is contrast, and I just don't want to add too much contrast. So I'm just going to reset this with that little balance on the bottom left there. And before I click the X there, I'm going to take the slider on the bottom. If I drag it all the way to the left, this is my opacity for the texture itself. So if the texture is a little too heavy handed, I can drag this to the left and kind of remove it. And right next to that is the ability to rotate it. So say I wanted that pink that's mostly showing up on the top that I wanted to show it up on the bottom. So here's on the right side, here's on the bottom, left side, and top. So now I'm going to click the X and I'm out of that. Excellent. All right, so I'm going to add a, one of the gels here and I can switch while I'm in this uh, pack picker here between the textures, the birds, and the gels. So I'm going to click on atmospheric light and I kind of like, I like that. Maybe not too much. Let's see, overlay, hard light, way too much. That looks really good in soft light. But I think it's adding a little bit too much like rose color to the stamen itself. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the eraser and I'm going to use kind of a low opacity. This is the opacity of the brush. This is the size of the brush. And I'm just kind of kind of come in here and remove that last effect from right there. That's better. Excellent. So say I wanted to add a different texture. So I've got all these textures down here, but what if I wanted to add another one on top of this one? If I go to switch my pack and I pick something else, it's going to remove this texture and basically start over. And I don't want to do that. So what I have to do is I have to press and hold and it will ask me if I want to flatten this image and it can't be undone. So if I flatten it, I'm going to go ahead and do that flatten this image and then I'm going to switch my pack and let's just go back to our original textures here and I can just kind of see if I wanted to add something else on top of it. Say I wanted to add something like that but I wanted to lower the opacity of it. These are the types of things that you can do here. Absolutely fantastic. So if I click undo it's going to undo everything after the point where I flatten the photo. So if I clicked reset, I'm just back here. So that little bit that I did here with soft light and then I went in and lowered the opacity, it didn't do a lot. And I actually want to remove that effect anyway, because again, it, it did a little too much. I actually just really like this image the way that it is. And so I'm going to save it. So I'm going to click on that button in the top right corner and I have a few options here. I can just download it, save it directly to my iPad. I can email it and I can click on more where it allows me to bring it into another app. If it's compatible, not all of them are. Save it to your files, things like that. So I'm going to just save this to my iPad and it gives you the option to share instantly on Instagram, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to click dismiss. Okay, one more real quick because I want to show you something very particular. Okay, so I'm going to add kind of a dramatic texture here. And okay, so say I like what this texture does in overlay mode. And I like what the olive does, but I don't really want it to apply to the bug itself. I just want it kind of on the background a little bit. So we'll put that in, put that in soft light mode. And I'm gonna click on that eraser again and show you that a little bit more slowly this time. So again, the slider on the left is the opacity. And this is what I do anytime that I have specifically an animal or a person or some sort of area of concentration that I really don't want the texture to obscure too much or cover up. And so I'll make, a, make myself a nice big soft brush. If I do it at 100% opacity, you can kind of see that the change is very abrupt especially if I come in here, it's just too abrupt. So I'm going to switch this tiny little button here back to a plus and bring that back in and bring that back in. 
Okay, so this is how you can kind of go back and forth, back and forth between removing and adding. So I'm going to click on remove again, and I'm going to make sure that the hand tool is picked. The little 3D box that you have on the top there is whether or not your image was taken in portrait mode. If you have a tablet or a phone that is capable of shooting in portrait mode where it automatically softens the background, you can actually use that here and it'll make a, a nicer selection for you. But I'm going to use a low opacity and just kind of come in here and remove the effect from the bugs themselves. There we go. Maybe a little bit of it up in here, a little too much green going on. And because I used a low opacity brush, if I tap and drag a little bit, it removes a little bit. If I do it again, it's a little bit more and a little bit more. So that is a wonderful way to kind of build up the effect of removing or adding the texture, depending on whether or not you have that minus or that plus. Okay, so I'm going to click the checkbox and I am good to go. Now if I switch to a different texture here, so let's switch to this one, the mask that I created stays. So if I click on that erase button again and press on it, you can kind of see where the previous strokes were. So it maintained that mask. I'm going to click the X box because I don't need that. If you need to zoom in on a certain portion of your image, these four little arrows right here will allow you to do that. That's the only way that I can kind of pinch and, and drag my image around to look at specific areas just to make sure that everything is okay. I cannot do that while I'm in this view, unfortunately. So, But they do give you this wonderful zoom tool so you can go in there and do exactly that. Make sure that you don't have any harsh transitions between where I masked in and masked out. I'm going to go back to none on both of these. Now, if I were seriously working on this image, I'd probably want something relatively soft. And so let me show you real quick how to import your own texture. Click on the custom button down here on the right. Go to my album and my textures. And I'm going to pick one that's kind of soft with some spring colors to it. Okay, so hard light, soft light. See, that looks nice. Soft light, I'm going to leave it there, and I'm actually going to remove a little bit of it from these guys right here, and I'm going to click OK with that, and then I might add, just to change the overall tone a little bit, how about May? And maybe a little soft light with that. Soft light tends to be less heavy-handed when it applies the, the texture to the image. So I'm going to click OK with that, but it kind of brightened up that top portion a little bit too much. So I'm going to do the mask and I'm going to remove it from up there. There we go. And if I click on my sliders here, I have the ability to rotate that top one, which is the gel, and to rotate that bottom one, which is my texture. And just because the texture was brought in here at a certain direction and angle doesn't mean you can't flip it around. I think I might add just a little bit more contrast, and I'm good. I think I'm going to add a little bit of a vignette effect. So in order to add something else, I have to press and hold and flatten. And let's look for some stuff with some vignettes. No, I think it's going to end up being a gel. Yep, we go with the original overlays, and Lily here has a little bit of a vignette. And then I come in here and take my sliders and just lower the opacity a little bit so it just has a, a very slight effect. Excellent. And I'm done. And I will save that and dismiss that. And we are good to go. With an image like this, because it has an actual living creature in it, that definitely came into my calculations as to what I wanted to do with this image. I wanted to make sure that I didn't cover up those bugs too terribly much. So I had to make use of some of the masking tools that are available in here so that I don't essentially remove the main subject there by use of a texture. And I wanted to find one that had complementary colors and tones to enhance the image, not just change it completely. Although you can do that if that is your goal. Thanks again.